Pat Love back with Pat's Two Cents. Now we are going to read God's Word. And we're going to start with Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. This is a slight continuation of what I just talked about, but kind of at a different level and a different scale. Now we're dealing with our deeds being advertised. And I want you to hear how God hates the way we promote ourselves in the body of Christ to be seen of men. All right, now I want you to hear this. I'm going to start reading now, and I am going to do everything I need to do to get there. Give me a second. All right, here we go. Now, starting at verse 1. Take heed that ye do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, ye have no reward of your Father, which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound the trumpet. Yeah, before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, yeah, they have their reward. Verse 3. But when thou doest alms, let not your left hand know what your right hand doeth, that thine alms may be in secret. And thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. Now you know, I hear a lot of born-again Christians, genuine sincere people not realizing that they are doing exactly the opposite of what this word says and i'm going to share some examples with you i want you to hear this now listen have you ever been in a church service have you ever uh heard the leader or the pastor do a little manipulative ploy what they do to manipulate a big offering is they will march and then as they march, the people around the, the congregation, they know that those who are not giving are going to be a little embarrassed because they're not getting up and marching. But when they do, they will say things like this. Anybody who wants to give $1,000, stand up right now. Show the Lord how much you love them. Boop. Boop, 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 boop. And these people are standing with their chest out. And yes, everyone see me. I'm giving the thousand. Then the next line is 500. Everyone who wants to give 500, come up. Now, you know what I heard one time? This cracked me up. This was a pastor at a church in L.A. I could not believe it. This was one of those mega churches that everybody knows about. They even know his name. And I'm not going to say it. Because we all fall short of the glory of God. So I'm not trying to make anybody look bad. But this is how even the most genuine fall into error. Those that give $1,000, I want you to come up front and stand with the pastor. We're going to take your picture and we're going to, you get to shake the pastor's hand. Huh? Really? Anyway, moving right along. You will find people who will proudly get up. Now, the person that obeys that word will wait for the general population, so to speak. And they will say, those of you who have 25 or less or whatever you want to give, just come on up, you know, because we want everybody to have a chance to give to the Lord, even if it's just a dollar. Anybody that comes up, just come on up now. The ushers are going to, uh, uh, what is it, uh, procession you forward and guide you back to your seats. Okay. So everybody gets up. If you're smart, you will get up 
when they're not counting how much everybody's giving. That's when you give your thousand dollars. That's when you give your five hundred. Because that's when God will reward you openly. Because you have not sounded a trumpet about how much you're giving. Or you'll wait till the service ends and hand your envelope privately to the usher. Whatever. But you won't be standing there sounding a trumpet. I give a thousand dollars because I am that giving saint. Yeah. Believe me, that's God's attitude towards that as well, as you have well heard. Be very careful about how you uh, announce your giving to the Lord. Be very careful about times when you fast. It's fasting time. And everybody says, oh, we're going out to eat. You want to go with us? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I can't. I'm fasting. I'm in prayer and fasting. That's your secret. You keep that mess to yourself. What you do in secret, God will reward you openly. What you don't realize, listen to this. There is a very subtle line between pride and humility. And when we think that we are being humble, so to speak, we're not. What we're really doing is being prideful and boastful. We are lifting ourselves up into the heavenly realm so that all eyes can see how righteous, how holy, how angelic we are. How Christ-like we have grown to be in this wicked and perverse generation. Trust me, baby, the only one impressed by you is you. The only one impressed by what you do is you. Do you get what I'm saying? Listen. Ah! I remember, hit my wrist, I remember when I was at church a number of times, uh, I was at different services, and what they would do is call the leaders up and the ministers, and all the ministers would be dressed in their collars, and, uh, and if you were to walk up to them and say, hi, what's your name? What their response would be is this. My name is Pastor, blah, 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 blah. My name is Bishop, blah, 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 blah. I am Apostle, la -di da When they tried to call Jesus by a title, Jesus said there's only one good, and that's God. It was his way of saying, don't address me with titles. I don't need that. My ego is not at stake here. It is ego and pride. I'm telling you, we don't realize as people of God how we fall into this pride thing. But pride is a stench to God's nostrils. Read Isaiah chapter 1, and you'll see how much he hates the stench that comes up from some of our worship and praise. Yeah, it'll blow you away when you read it. But the issue is, we as leaders don't always realize that we don't need the titles. Listen, check it out. You notice that some of the churches on TV, mega churches, when they call the pastor's name male or female, they call their first and last name. Do you notice there is no title attached? Do you know why? Because they know who they are. They don't need it. Now, there are cultures and subcultures, and some of you get my drift when I say that, that still need the titles because there is a very deep root of insecurity 
in certain cultures. But it still boils down to pride. I don't care if you have a million members or 10. You should not need to be addressed by a title. When someone tells me, when I ask them, oh, what's your name? I am apostle so-and-so. I'm done. Because I don't need to be around people who need their ego stroked. That does nothing for me. When you go up to a person and you say, oh, um, how do you pronounce your name again? I am Pastor Appleseed. I am Bishop Bloody Da. I am Elder Higher Than Thou. I mean, it, it, it really, we don't realize how, how much pride goes into that. And sadly, even a lot of members don't realize it. It's not necessary. The only one that deserves a title is God. Seriously. Think about it. None of you are any more than anyone else. Now you may give somebody a seat of honor or take somebody to a special table, whatever. But let me tell you about that too. Now this is Pat. I'm in my flesh right now. So I hope that there's a little Holy Spirit in this. But it irks me to see so much pride in the church. I have gone to church services. And they have a special table way over at the end for the pastors, the pastors' wives or husbands, the leaders, the elders, the bishops, whatever. And they all get to sit there amongst their important selves and they're doing their thing. Now, let me share this with you. I'm not trying to make myself a stand that I'm trying to help you see an attitude. I am an ordained minister of the gospel. I am a preacher and I have pastored a church and I have done prison outreach. I do not sit with those people. I just don't. Now, if they call me in there for a minute, yeah. But when I eat and I'm socializing, I'm over there with everybody else with the saints because that's all I am is a saint who has just been given an assignment by God. That's all. I've just been given an assignment. I haven't been giving, given a badge to wear for all the world to see. Just been simply given an assignment. It doesn't... Uh, it doesn't uh, describe who I am. Who I am is who I am with or without a title. The good, bad, and the ugly. The title doesn't change any of it. So I don't need to sit with a special group of people. You know, one of my friends, she's a pastor's wife. And she said, now here she is what a lot of churches in certain cultures referred to as first lady she will not go with that because she doesn't need that and she has been with other women who have been pastor why uh, pastors wives and when she says oh hi my name is so-and-so she gives her first name guess what their response is oh hello i am first lady la di da di da and she in her mind, she's thinking, okay, I'm happy for you. She doesn't even say she's a first lady too. She doesn't go into that because she doesn't need her ego stroked. I'm telling you, when you start getting into this pride thing, you don't know how nauseating it gets. And imagine how many people out in the world are turned off to it. They see the ego parade coming and going. And some of us who are in the body of Christ are the last ones to recognize it. We are filled with the Holy Spirit, including the gift of discerning of spirits. And we can't even discern our own pride. Ooh, Lord, help us here in the name of Jesus. 
I'm done on that one. 